All right, guys, I'm on my lunch break here, and uh, I've been reading the news about all of the furor, the fuss and stuff going on about the Supreme Court nomination and abortion, uh, Roe versus Wade in that case. So I thought I would uh, take a second and go over some of the basic civics involved in all of this stuff that you guys got in 12th grade in civics class. So let's start with the Supreme Court. What's the big deal? The Supreme Court is covered in Article Three of the Constitution. According to the writings that go along with the Founding Fathers, they wanted Supreme Court nominees to be a lifetime appointment for stability, for consistency, for continuity. If we're changing this position every four years, you'd get the law and the Constitution swinging around like presidential orders. It'd be crazy. But if we're only changing one every couple of years and the majority is staying on, then a new appointee is only slightly going to change any kind of ruling. And the Supreme Court is not supposed to use any politics, any personal judgment, or anything like that. It is, based, it is simply the Constitution as written. Lately, we've gotten to what people call judicial activism. Can't really be stopped. But the job of a Supreme Court judge is to... Uh, rule only on Constitution and federal law. Now, the Supreme Court has two types of cases they can hear. They don't just interject this stuff and wake up one morning and go, hey, that's wrong. I think we're going to act on that. You have to file a lawsuit to get there. And it's got to be a very specific lawsuit. And if there's any possible way it could be handled at a lower court, they're going to do that because everybody wants to get to the Supreme Court. There's only nine people on it. So they can't hear all of your problems. The original jurisdiction, things that go straight to the Supreme Court, it's one state suing another state. One nation suing another nation. If the United States is a party in that, in that lawsuit, Supreme Court hears it. You follow me so far? If it's an ambassador, someone who uh, crosses international borders, international law, Supreme Court. They also have the appellate jurisdiction, where if the lower state courts have an issue, lower federal courts have an issue, and someone appeals on a constitutional basis, like say Roe versus Wade, then the Supreme Court can hear this. But they never interject themselves into cases, and they don't go, hey, you know what? I think we're going to step in and take, no. Someone's going to have to file a lawsuit, and then what the Supreme Court is trained to do, or what they're told to do, what their job to do, is to do is continuity and consistency. So if an earlier Supreme Court has already ruled, unless it's obviously not what we do in the Constitution, it's going to remain. And they have the option to throw a lot of cases out. So if this case has already been brought forward under somebody else's name, but it's exactly like a previous case, they can go, you know what, we've already ruled. Uh -uh. We're not doing this mess again. We don't have the time for that. You got your ruling. You got your consistency. So what if that case is 100 years old? We're going to rule the same way, so save us all the trouble and take our old ruling and just be gone. Rare is it when a new issue comes to the Supreme Court. They only hear a couple hundred cases a year. So let's go to Roe versus Wade. In the case of Roe versus Wade, you have a lady in Texas. I believe she's 21 years old. It's 1969, and her name is Norma McCorvey. And Norma McCorvey gets pregnant with her third child, she's 21, but she doesn't want this child. She would like to have an abortion. Texas law at the time limits abortion to only in case of danger to the mother's health and life. Okay, well Norma McCorvey um, wants an abortion and she would originally go to the state saying she was raped and using that as a reason to try to get around the laws. That's a different story for a different day. She would be referred to some civil rights attorneys, in which case, when it goes to court, she admits she wasn't raped, she just doesn't want the child. Uh, well, this changes things. So you're going to hear from some people, I'm going to try to stay as non-political as possible here. You're going to hear from some people saying, well, you know, she chose not to have an abortion. Um, she also was still in court for the right to have one when the child was born because it takes longer to appeal a court case than it does to carry a child to gestation. So there's that. She will uh, eventually sue the state 
and two civil rights lawyers will take up her case and they'll keep it running long after the child is born. She will give that child up for adoption, but the civil rights attorneys are going to keep the case alive in court. And a three judge federal judge panel will rule in favor of uh, Norma McCorby over Texas law. They will say that Texas law cannot tell a woman what to do with uh, medical decisions. And it's going to be listed as a medical privacy case. Well, Texas will immediately appeal and it will go to the Supreme Court. This case will be heard in 1973. This is three and a half years later. The child is walking now when this case gets to the Supreme Court, right? <sighs> Supreme Court will rule that the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment provides a, quote, right to privacy, end quote, that protects pregnant women's right to choose whether or not to have an abortion. But it also ruled that this right is not absolute and must be balanced against the government's interest in protecting women's health and protecting prenatal life. Here's where your big debate comes in. Your Supreme Court nominee Barrett has said over and over in journals, and you can look it up, that she doesn't see Roe versus Wade, the right to abortion, being overturned. The problem is the way the court was, the way the case was ruled. All right, the Supreme Court will uh, offer a balancing test, I guess you can call it, by giving trimesters of pregnancy. During the first trimester, they will rule, it's actually safer to have the abortion procedure than to carry the baby out to full term. During that time, the states cannot limit it in any way. During the first, uh, first trimester, was that nine weeks? During the second trimester, governments could require reasonable health regulations. Governments can, state governments, not federal, states, state governments can demand certain types of facilities, certain types of doctors, certain type of insurance. That's okay, according to Roe versus Wade. During the third trimester, abortions could be prohibited entirely so long as the laws contained exceptions for cases that were necessary to save the life and health of the mother. Now, going back to the Supreme Court and the Constitution, if it's not specifically listed in the Constitution, and abortion is not, marriage is not, driving age is not, then according to the Tenth Amendment, this automatically defaults to the state. Each state can determine its own laws and this stuff. As long as it's not um, violating a stated, listed, enumerated constitutional right. For example, what kind of facilities can host abortions? State can do that. State can handle that. Roe versus Wade said states cannot limit first trimester, but at second trimester they can limit, and by third trimester they can block it, they can prohibit it. This is state to state. All right? You follow me? It gets even better. 1992, Planned Parenthood will sue, trying to make, uh, the case is called Planned Parenthood versus Casey, trying to expand upon Roe versus Wade's precedent. The court reaffirmed Roe's holding that a woman's right to choose to have an abortion is constitutionally protected, but abandoned the trimester framework in favor of a new standard called fetal viability. Ah, at what point does the fetus become viable? Or how do you want to interpret viable? We're going to put that with the states. If viability means it's alive, it has a heartbeat, your state can choose that. If viability means this child can like live on its own and it's got a job and it's driving and stuff, your state can choose that. Obviously, once the child is born. But one thing we're looking at right now is abortion up to the point, as long as the toes are still inside, that baby is not fully born. Some states are saying that child is not a human yet because it's technically still inside of mom. This is the state-to-state -state battle that the Constitution opens up under the Tenth Amendment. The court found two government interests that were sufficiently compelling to permit states to impose some limitations on the right to choose to have an abortion. The first one is protecting the mother's health. We cannot refuse a woman treatment for her health and safety. And number two, protecting the life of the fetus. 
If the state has no vested interest in it, then the state should let the fetus go. But if the state can prove it has a vested interest in saving the life of that fetus, then the state uh, can intervene. According to the Tenth Amendment, state to state. You follow me? Let me read you a couple of quotes, and I'll close on this. A couple of quotes directly from the Roe versus Wade decision. At some point in pregnancy, these respective interests become sufficiently compelling to sustain regulation of the factors that govern the abortion decision. We therefore conclude that the right of personal privacy includes the abortion decision, but that this right is not unqualified and must be considered against important state interests and regulations. The state can play a role. All right, quote number two. We need not resolve the difficult position of when life begins. When those trained in the respective disciplines of medicine, philosophy, and theology are unable to arrive at any consensus, the judiciary in this point in the development of man's knowledge is not in a position to speculate as to these answers. So the Supreme Court just comes out and flat out says, hey, look, as long as you're debating when life begins, we're not going to decide for you. Don't look to the courts to solve a theological, religious morality issue for you. Supreme Court only does law and constitution. And if you can prove life begins one place or another, Supreme Court will rule. Otherwise, it's state to state, and this is why we vote. I hope that helps a little bit and clears a little bit up for you.